futures and options on futures trading involve substantial risk and is not a suitable investment for all types of investors. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. When I use the word I in this video, it refers to what I teach in my charting course or what I author in my twice daily oral and written updates. Prices shown on charts and quote boards are in real time and take into account all known activity up to this point in time. And if you'd like to read more of this disclaimer, simply hit the pause key on your video player. Well, good day, everyone. I'm Ira Epstein, and I'm here to talk about one of my favorite indicators, the slow stochastic study. You know, one of my favorite things about this indicator is it has a personality. I know a lot of people use a relative strength index to measure if a market's overbought or oversold, a moving average convergence, divergence signal called an MACD. In fact, there's a whole slew of things that people can use. I happen to have tried all those and fell in love with what's called a slow stochastic, and I learned it from a gentleman called George Lane, and he was one of the developers, but I think I took it a bit further with studies applying a personality to a market. This is a gold chart, but this could be any chart. It's totally unimportant what the name of the chart is. This is just a bar chart. Think of it as anything. I don't care if it's, you're looking at it as an apple. It can be the Chicago Mercantile stock. It could be uh, Tiffany. I don't care the company, nor do I care what the futures market is. Let's just call it a graph of market prices. I take that graph and I apply what's called the slow stochastic study, which implies there is such a thing as a fast stochastic study. I prefer the slow one. I find that it's, for what I teach, it tracks better. It's made up of two lines. One, the red one, is called the K line. The other line, the D line, which is the dark one, I set up my parameters to be an 80 number and a 20 number. And what I'm looking for is when the market is coming down and approaching 20, anything under 30, I'm calling that market getting into an oversold condition. Conversely, as the red line, which is always ahead of the brown, it whips around the brown. Why? Let me start there. Because it uses three periods worth of data. Now, I'll call a period a day, but if this were a weekly chart, it'd be three weeks worth of data. If this were a five-minute bar chart, it'd be three five-minute periods of data. So, this is a daily chart, so it uses three days worth of data, whereas the brown line in the formula uses five. Got that? Therefore, with less data, the number is always going to be closer in the red to what the action of the formula is on the last price versus the brown. Simply put, the brown will lag the red. Got it? Any number over 70 starts getting overbought. Now, let's take this a day at a time. Here is the market getting into more of an overbought condition. And notice how the market typically, when it gets there, it will pause out the way that it did here. This is the typical action of it. But life isn't always typical. What can happen in this market is it can lose its personality. In other words, here was oversold. Here is overbought, and then the markets start developing over the 80 level, the red and the brown stay together. Aha, uh -huh, schizophrenia setting in. But what's really happening is that as long as that red line stays over that 80 level, innately, whatever the trend is that's in place, and typically it'll be an uptrend when that's occurring, it should move either to sideways or higher price levels. It loses that personality when the red line hits under 80. And please understand, this is my interpretation. Is everything always like this? I wish I could tell you that everything was always some way. The market drops down, trying to get itself into a correction. And it's successfully done it. In fact, it's almost gotten itself oversold. So now it's getting back to a more normal personality. And lo and behold, the market starts getting both the numbers down into an oversold area. They are not both under 20 here. If you look at the reading, it's 27 and 25. But I just wanted you in red to see how it can get oversold. Now the markets start bouncing around. Now markets can stop here and drop back down, or they can continue here and go up. You'll notice that price action often goes with the stochastic. I have found a stochastic to often be a leader of momentum, not a follower of the market momentum. It can change on you. But that's what it, I, I find it most often to be. Again, I'm circling this because both numbers are now over 80. So I'll call that embedded or a locked-in condition. The red line breaks down, comes back under the 80. I look for the market to go sideways to lower. Markets now 
trying to figure out what to do next. Neutral is anything near 50, and that's where the market's hanging. And now the market starts moving itself back into overbought and now back into that embedded stochastic study. Now, the stochastic studies can go and they can embed all over the board. They can embed to the upside. They can embed to the downside eventually. It's both ways. Obviously, in a market that's more bullish than bearish, or what we'll tend to call a bull market, you will see this price action more often than not do what? Be to the upside. But more times than not, you get overbought and oversold. And it's an indicator to help you, and that's the key, recognize that and maybe say to yourself, hey, maybe it's not the best idea to be selling into an oversold condition, or maybe it's not the greatest of ideas to buy into an overbought. That condition changes when you get the embedded stochastic. And that's one of the things that we try to teach in our charting course called Ira Epstein's Charting Course. There's 47 videos in the charting course. This obviously short video is not intended to replace what's in the course. It's just to give you an idea so that sometimes when I'm doing my YouTube videos or the videos that's on our website, you better understand some of the technical jargon I use. I'm Ira Epstein. If you'd like to learn more about this, go to our website under the word education, and we'll see you there.